yeah, usually when we talk about a plant-based diet, we focus on all uh, uh, different aspects of it. Uh, we talk about plant-based for the plants, plant uh, for, for for the against animal cruelty, plant-based for health, uh, plant-based for the planet. Uh, but rarely do we speak about the actual transition. What happens if someone transitions from uh, a carnivorous diet or a vegetarian diet to a full, full-on plant-based diet. Today, our guest is Sinovuya Mankubela uh, to actually uh, take us through all the actual, uh, the whole process of transitioning. Uh, she's actually on the transition uh, as we speak. Uh, she's been plant-based uh, for, I think, just a year, over a year, uh, but she'll tell us all about that. Uh, welcome to Plant Power with Maui too. Uh, you've got uh, Sino Makubela as our guest. Sino, welcome. How are you? Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So how's uh, how's it going? Uh, I know you're nice and green. You look very healthy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before we actually get to the subject matter of the day, tell us who is Sino, where you're from, and you know what inspired the journey. Lovely. Um, so my trip only began two years ago. Okay. Then when COVID started, we quarantined together for those first 21 days. So I don't particularly like cooking. So she was in charge of all the cooking. And basically, I ate what was in front of me. And yeah, I, slowly I just keep realizing that I don't miss the meat as much in the meals. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So from the Eastern Cape, uh, so this was actually inspired by, safe to say, by the lockdown COVID, basically. Okay, so it had nothing to do with health, nothing to do with trying to lose weight, nothing to do with trying out new things. You know, nobody. There was there was such such a great element of uncertainty during that period, and nobody actually knew what was going to happen. And people were trying to rediscover themselves, you know, realign themselves with, you know. So, so nothing of that nature. Um, I've always been big on conservation, okay. sustainability, it's our planet, it's their planet. So before actually going food vegan, like I've always been, like I use organic stuff for my body, okay. and, wash and stuff like that. Okay. And then when my sister went uh, like food or plant vegan, yeah. Um, which she also had started for weight, like weight loss reasons. Then eventually, obviously, like she started getting into it, and um, yeah. So, um, yeah, okay, there was that, and then yeah, then we moved in together, and she was cooking, and um, then it just showed me another side of plant based. Like I don't know about veganism and things like that. I was just like, ah, I'm big on sustainability. I want to protect the animals. I want to protect the environment. And I was like, oh, okay. I'd never considered giving up meat or things like that. And I was just like, um, you always assume, even when she said she was vegan, like, I mean, I wasn't staying with her and, you know, I wasn't eating anything she was making. I didn't see what she was eating. Yeah. Um, you assume that people are eating meat, right? And you're like, I'm not going to give up bacon. There's no way to give up <laughs> cheese. And then, yeah, it, like, there's, apart from just substitutes, because we don't actually consume a lot of um, meat substitutes, if you make the meals interesting, like it doesn't have to be boring. I think that's what made the transition easier. That's okay. Really, yeah. The full transition was probed a little bit by December weight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. January, and I was like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, I don't like this weight. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, already last year, already I've given up um, meat substitutes. Um, like yeah, no, sorry, byproducts. Uh, okay. Dairy and things like that. I already given that up using vegan mayo, vegan cheese, all of that, that stuff. So this year, January, I was like, okay, we're going to go, uh, we're going to do veganuary. So oh, lovely, we're lovely. Not, we're not doing any substitutes, nothing. We're just going full vegan uh, for January. And I was also sick at the time, and, like, I needed this big operation. And then, yeah, I was supposed to go for my checkup in February. So I did this full month of veganism. And then I had my doctor's appointment at the end of January. Um, and then, yeah, so I went mid-Feb for my doctor's appointment. So, yeah, he does the scans again. And he's just like, oh, actually, you 
don't need this operation anymore. And I was like, boom, it's that vegan diet. Like, <laughs> that vegan diet. So, yeah, then after that, I was like, okay, cool. Then I don't see any reason to like, commit to this thing. Like, yeah. You know, like, okay, well, never mind veganuary. Like, let's, let's do this. Yeah. So, 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 so that's a great thing. So you actually was, was, there was curiosity to transition, but also while well, with you, it was, it was, it was, it was never going to be such a difficult, uh, transition because you've, you've, I mean, you've been someone who has been low key conscious about the lifestyle and, and so, uh, so what did the doctor say after that? Like, was, did he recommend any? further treatment or still left in shock and wasn't interested in actually trying to understand that i mean did the miracle just happen i mean but because also with with, with people who deal with science and allo allo allopathic medicine they know that miracles don't exist so i mean i'm surprised that he didn't want to pry any further uh, he did like he because when i went um i think like my first checkup was last in november i think yeah then it was like oh you've got this and this and this um and you're gonna to have to do this operation. And I was like, oh, I'm not medical aid. Like, how long can I wait? It's like I really wouldn't wait longer than two months to do this thing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that gives me December, January to like put together almost a hundred k for a hospital stay. Sure. And I was like, okay, but anyway, like, don't panic. Um, just come back in January. Let's do a checkup, but definitely let's schedule, you know, the surgery for February. And I was like, oh, okay. So definitely, when I came back, you know, because he was really worried. Um, yeah. You know, so when I came back, he was, he was like, oh, okay. And there was some, like, there was some tests that he was supposed to do uh, in my initial visit, but, you know, he'd already seen the problem. He was like, there's not even a need for this. Yeah. But now on the second visit, when things were looking good, I was like, oh, actually, uh, I'm going to send you for some, you know, for some blood work and this and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when those results come back, I'll confirm, confirm if you really don't need it. So yeah, um, did all of that. And then a week later, he called me, he was like, no, you're, you're fine. <laughs> wow and and you're not curious to actually go back to me and tell him you know i'm actually interested in telling you why i'm fine i, I yeah i suppose i wish he'd asked also and because i also know that um apart from a lot of a lot of what makes us really ill is what we put into our body yes yes but yes i also know that um what i had was largely caused by like one of the biggest causes of it is a poor diet no oh, no no of course and yeah for me like i was a very big paper weight eater That's okay why it was like so easy to live with my sister because when i lived on my own i live off you know take away yes 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 so yeah i i think maybe, maybe when i go obviously because i'll obviously go again for another checkup so yeah um, maybe i'll engage in when i go again okay and 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 you obviously see there is an opportunity between uh bridging the gap with with medicine and nutrition because i think it is actually people in our space people who have chosen this alternative way of living the the plant-based diet because i think there's 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 quite comprehensive research that actually shows that you know you your answer is not necessarily a pill but your answer is actually broccoli or you know or baby spinach you know uh so so you do believe that we we could actually play a huge role in bridging that gap, uh, but where do we start though? Where do you think we should start? Um, I'm not actually sure because I think there's a lot of, or there's a large absence of information because yeah. it's not even my doctor who told me that um, the illness I had was caused by a poor diet yes. or that a poor diet was a huge contributor. It's through my own research after he's like, okay, this is your diagnosis. Yeah. So I now went out and and you know found all of this information i was just like oh okay so if i make because apart from all these millions of pills that he's now prescribed yeah and i'm like i'm not actually feeling better they actually he's not prescribed anything apart uh, from surgery these yeah. pills are, are painkillers like you yeah. have to live with this pain until we do the surgery so here's some antibiotics and some painkillers okay and that's all they did they kill the pain while i'm sleeping or yeah in between takes, but they're not actually getting rid of you know the illness so i don't really know what we could do because i know for myself like it's it's an everyday learning without the illness yeah. without my own illness would i have known that my body could do that for example of course so, yeah yeah and without my doctor being able to to help me understand what's wrong with me yes you know can i go home and 
inverted commas self medicate. Yes. Okay. Uh, but okay. So so whilst we're on that on that point, uh, within the black African families, right? Yes. We all of us have lost a loved one due to chronic ailments, whether it be cancer, whether it be coronary artery uh, disease, whether it be diabetes. So those are common things, you know. Uh, it is an it is an urgent conversation to have with our families. You said you're from the Eastern Cape. Now, do you understand that it would be a dreadful thing for you to prosper in good health? And you know how to actually get to good health. Yeah. And then at the same time, we go back to our families and we do not have this conversation with them. Uh, there's a cultural aspect to that we'll get to. Uh, I think I have this conversation with most of my guests. Have, what challenges, firstly, have you encountered? Like, was it well received within the family that you have gone plant-based? Uh, was it like, did you have no no challenges? Uh, how how's how how it how has it been basically? I think for the most part it was intriguing for them because okay, it's just like this whole new thing. Like, what there are people who consciously go out of their way to avoid eating meat and meat byproducts. So yeah, it was just such a, a shock and more um, amazement on their part. Yeah, but obviously the challenge is always going home because it's easier now because it's just me and my sister. And yeah. And both of you are vegan. Yeah. So yeah. It makes it easier for us. But then now we go home over, you know, holidays and you know that first of all you can't go home without packing your whole groceries with you because you won't be able to eat. Yeah. And then also now you're home, so you're expected to do all this cooking and how do you tell these people that you're not going to cook these things? You know, like <laughs> um and it's 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 a struggle, but um I think they they uh, entertain us because we're only there for a few days, but also it's difficult to make, it's difficult to to get them to see it as a lifestyle because it, yeah. it just seems like we're on a diet. Yeah. So it's like, oh, so you don't eat fish either. Oh, I forgot that you don't eat, you know, you don't consume milk. Um, and it's always like it's something that to them it's just like you're on this thing now and one glass of milk now won't hurt you. Or, yeah. Oh, we've already made this soup. Uh, fine, don't eat the meat. Don't yeah. have the soup. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge: is is is, try, is trying to get them to see it as a. Um, because that's the thing: is that I would love for everyone to believe in sustainability, to want to preserve the environment. But yeah. If not that, like at the very least, do it for yourself, right? Yeah. Like give yourself the best chance at life. Yeah. Um. Because with you know veganism, I'm not even that active and. I lost like something like 10 kgs in that first month. No, for sure. So, you know, things like that. And my body's the healthiest it's ever been. Yeah. It's, you feel the difference, but it's so difficult to communicate it to someone else. And yeah. you can see it in your soul. They're like, oh my God, you're looking so great. And, but yeah, I, there's always that thing where it's, oh, I could never give up meat. Yeah. But yeah. you can. No, 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 definitely. Can, definitely. You know? Yeah. It's, I, th I think it's how we, we, it, we've been raised. It's how we've been programmed. You know, ch uh, children are extremely impressionable. So what you see the parents doing, uh, you, that becomes a lifestyle. That becomes almost like a norm. Like this is how things need to be done, you know. Uh, do you think then if you have children, you would, it would be an appropriate thing to raise children uh, with this plant-based diet? Yeah, my children are going to be everything that I am, or rather, I will raise my children Vegan. according to my beliefs, and that includes veganism. Yeah, and I'm open for an 18 year old to decide they yeah. to try meat or whatever. But I'm yeah. definitely without doubt raising my kids vegan. Okay, now, 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 again, we're going to family relations. The children must go and see the grandparents. Children must visit other relatives. How do you then say? But my child does not eat this. Or do you make an exception for that weekend or for that winter holiday or for the summer holiday? There can't be exceptions because, uh, because it's a belief system. It's not a diet. Yeah. So there are no, oh, you you know, you're here uh, so you can have some Mori biscuits because they're having yeah. Mori biscuits. Yeah. If it means packing a whole bag of food, 
for my because that's also what we do when we go to places like going to Bryce and stuff. You know, we yeah. probably convince people because people will say, "Oh, um, I made spinach, but oh, but I used milk. Will that be fine? It's not <laughs> going to be fine." Yeah. So wherever we go, we'll always pack our own lunch. Right? Yeah. We we'll always bring whatever. If it's a bride or a dinner, we'll bring our own. Dinner, bring our own dried goods. Okay. So I think maybe that will be the same for my kids, uh, depending on where they're going. You know, the obviously people I know that will respect that and make that effort. Yeah. But also, there are people who, if I believe, it will be too much of an inconvenience. You know, I'd rather just save my child with all of the things that they'll eat for that weekend. Okay, I hear you. Now, now let's go back to the transition, right? So you're on week one. So you've decided that you're going plant-based, right? Uh, the body is obviously in a bit of shock. Uh, oh, or let, or let me rephrase this. Did you start by cutting out portions of the the animal-based products, or you went cold turkey? You just decided that, look, I'm getting, wow. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't even a real shock. I, I, and that's why it's also been like a difficult thing for me to, to try and get other people to, like I always say to people, I don't so much promote veganism, right? Okay. For you as a lifestyle or for someone else as a lifestyle. Yeah. What I promote is sustainable living. Yes, yes, so yes, yes. You yes, don't yes. need meat in every single meal you eat. And you don't need a meat byproduct in every single meal you eat. Yeah. If you have bacon for breakfast, you don't need two pieces of chicken for supper. Yeah. You know, you you can have a full day yeah. without meat and and if you can incorporate just those small changes into your lifestyle. Yeah. And the things that are easy for you to give up, like yeah. a soap, you know, start using vegan soap because then you don't have to taste that, do that. Uh vegan mayo, like things yeah. you know small changes yeah but and that's what i promote for other people because also for myself my relationship with meat wasn't excessive okay so, so it was it yeah. really wasn't giving up meat specifically yeah it wasn't too much of an adjustment for me but it's obviously the other and i don't like dairy either so okay I cool like yogurt didn't really eat yogurt for me but obviously cheese <laughs> so it's gonna be cheese, the eggs. Like when I go home every single holiday, it doesn't matter if I'm home for three days, my mom always buys a pack of sixty eggs because she knows that that's that's me and eggs, right? Yeah. So you know now she'll still do that like I don't eat eggs and you guys don't need sixty eggs in a household of five. Don't do that. Yeah. So yeah, um I know for me the transition, honestly, I didn't yeah, I think we make really good meals also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to get there. We're, we're getting there. Meals, so yeah. It, it makes the transition easier because the, you've also made it fun for yourself. Yes. So you, you haven't turned it into this like uh, dreadful thing that you're yeah. doing. It's an overhaul. It's a lifestyle overhaul. Like, yeah. Okay, this is my plate usually constitutes of rice and what, four other things. So I still want to maintain that, but what do I swap this out for? And, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what made it easy. Yeah. Now, yeah, and the thing is very, what you mentioned, that it's very important to understand what you replace with what. Yeah. So I think when when I mastered that, it was easy for me to, to I mean, but it was, I can tell you. So I'm, I'm an extremely, extre you know, I'm an extremely active human being, you know. So there are points where your body is depleted, you know. Uh, a readily available steak, you know, makes an immediate difference, you know. So, so, so if you don't plan your meals properly, then you, for instance, if, for instance, before, be, I mean, before getting here, I need to, I needed to soak chickpeas last night, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, I needed to soak chickpeas last night and I know I've, from here, I'm, I'm going to gym and yeah. from gym and I go, I go straight to, I go straight home and at least I know there's, you know, but, but, that's the struggle. So, so the planning, but, but what I've also realized is that your life becomes structured. So, so while you plan your meals, you don't realize that your life generally becomes organized because you have now been forced into unfamiliar territory. And the only way you're going to do this and strive in it and, and do well in it is, is if you're, if you organize yourself in a certain way. You're going to get into it and like, ah, I'll see tomorrow what I'm going to eat. It's going to be a nightmare. You're not going to enjoy it. You know, I always say to people, it's like when you do mountain biking and you buy a heavy aluminum bike, you know, the trails are so hard, hard, 
you know, and heavy. So you need a light bike for you to, to actually enjoy mountain biking and actually study the trails. It is the same with veganism. It's a bit pedantic. It takes time. You know, you must, you must plan it properly. But once you're in it, it's a breeze. But one thing I've realized, I don't know if this was the same experience with you. So in my first 21 days of this journey, what I did is I looked at the foods that I'm familiar with. So I made my own list to say, I eat kale, I eat this, I eat this. My grandmother used to cook lentils. So, hey, I'm back with the lentils again, you know. It was in July, so it was those hearty meal. It was hearty meal season, so you could make soups and stuff. But then after 21 days, I realized, but I didn't have meat. And I started, I started looking at food differently. And then, and then besides that, you start realizing that I'm sleeping better. My energy levels are high. You know, I, I, I can go and cycle 100 kilometers and recover within two hours because all that lactic acid, you know, my body is in non, non, like I, it, it's inflamed, but I eat non-inflammatory foods, you know. So, so, so I looked at food differently. And what I've realized is that what we eat is what the, is what is what gets recorded as, as as a software in your system. So so now when I'm hungry, the cravings I get, I would crave walnuts instead of craving chocolate. Yes. How long did that take? I think it was the second, third month. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to lie to people. I, I still get, you know, the cravings. Like is it? I'll wake up in a random like, oh, I could do with some eggs and bacon today. Yeah. But also, like you said, um, the, the constant meal planning and, and awareness about what you yeah. eat helps you form such a healthy relationship with food and your body that yeah. you, you get to understand your body and cravings better because you don't have to give into every single impulse your body has. Yeah. So even if I was on a diet or it was something that wasn't good for me, which, you know, meat isn't. <laughs> and once you understand that, like, I'm happy having a craving. Like, it doesn't matter. It mm. passes. Yeah, you know, it's like craving chocolate the whole day. Yeah, whether the whether I can access vegan chocolate or not, I don't want to have chocolate five days in a row. So yeah, I can have a craving and let it pass because my body will allow that. So yeah, yeah. No, no, no. With me, so 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 it's like yesterday. I was actually talking about chocolate. I was craving chocolate, and I made my. I took cacao powder, and I took hemp milk, and I actually just made myself hot chocolate. You know, with with maple syrup, you know. So it was, you know. So I've become that person. You know, if you eat dark chocolate when it's hard, it can feel a bit bitter. But you get new, you get, you also get nutrients there. You get minerals there. So that's another thing I always say is that with 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 a plant based slash vegan diet, you 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 eat food that actually. Uh, bring life to your cells you know it, it, it it's food that 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 interacts with you on a cellular level uh which 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 just makes the journey such a beautiful journey uh it it's still difficult like you say to to get people to to understand it from that point of view to say look if i am going to eat pumpkin seeds i'm getting in zinc you know if if and zinc is one of the most important trace minerals you know two billion more than two billion people globally uh, are deficient of zinc and zinc is the most one of the most important trace minerals for immunity so what does it tell you if if there's weak immunity with things like COVID, it's easy for people to just perish you know out of this uh from this pandemic so so but i don't like to say i want to have a strong immune system because of COVID. i want to say i want to have a healthy body generally you know but 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 a, he a healthy body also helps me think differently. So, so not just did I have a different relationship with food, but I started viewing animals differently. I started viewing the planet differently. Uh, I mean, I was, I came across information that says we were only left with 60 years of agricultural land. So if nothing happens, if nothing drastic happens in the next 20 years, it means that even the children, you can, you can, you can have educational policies for your kids. You can have a sort of great, bright future that you plan for your kids, but there'll be no plan for them to live in. So this is another thing that people do not understand, that it's not just, yes, we do it. It's great for our health. Make no mistake. But 
there's even a greater conversation to be had. But I was also saying to people, world hunger could be halved because this, you slaughter about 77 billion animals a year and there's seven, well, eight billion human beings. If you halved animal agriculture and you slaughtered, let's say, 30 billion animals a year, the water that you use to, to feed those animals, the agricultural space that you take up to feed those animals, you could actually have grazing land enough to feed the whole world overnight. World hunger could be over in no time because you would, you would have readily available land and the water will actually not be going to waste to actually feed animals that must quickly feed the meat industry, the dairy industry, the eggs industry. So even the cruelty part of it, I mean, I don't know if you've seen documentaries like uh, What the Health, Seaspiracy, uh, you know, those type of things. So, so, so you also become generally a better human being because you relate, you, 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 your being gets cultivated within the cons uh, consonants of nature, you know. Now, week one is done. Month one is done, right? And then you've got a choice to say, okay, then I'm going to go back to meat. Uh, then I'm going to continue. Then what makes you continue? Is it seeing the difference? In your, I mean, you, you, you lost 10Ks in a month. But is there no fear that you might actually end up being skinny? <laughs> because, <laughs> well, well, I've lost, I've lost 20Ks, more than 20Ks since, since, since going this route. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, end of month one, I think, I think it was the, going to see my doctor is just like what really sealed it for me. Um, okay. And I was just like, yeah. Because, okay, actually, yeah, that was mid-Feb. Yeah. So, in, meaning at the end of Jan, I'd already decided to keep this thing going. I think even before I went to see my doctor, like, I was sleeping better. Yep. I had more energy during the day. Um, I, yeah, I, like I, my body felt better than it's ever than it ever has. Yeah. Like, that's something that's so difficult to explain. But yeah. like, especially with COVID and being home so much, like I was feeling so sluggish all of the time. I was barely sleeping. Like you know, whole routines were out of whack. Yeah. But yeah, like in that first month, I could already. I was like, I, f I feel healthier. Um, I'm not even taking these painkillers anymore. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm actually feeling fine. Yeah. So yeah, and then after seeing my doctor, I was like, yeah, man, why would you, why would you stop something that's working for you? Yeah. 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 Yep. And I think, I think with me, it was, it was not being sick, but it was, I struggled with energy. Like uh, when I go on long rides and runs and swims and, when I transitioned and I then I was like, no, but I'm recovering better. Cause I would cycle like 80 Ks to hundred kilometers on a Saturday and it would take me the whole day to recover. Like I would have to sleep four or five hours after that, you know, and it's it, as, as soon as you walk into the house, it's difficult to go in and take a shower immediately cause you're tired. Sometimes even tired to pack, to take your bike and put it on the, on the rig and then drive back home. But when I saw the changing, I was like, no, there's something here. Yeah. And then when I saw insomnia going down, like I was like, okay, I'm ticking another box, you know. Uh, my concentration levels, like my vitality at work, I was like, okay, there's definitely something about this lifestyle, you know. I had you know, acid indigestion, I had all those issues. And all of that was gone, like gone, gone, gone. You know, it was a thing of the past, you know. And then I was like, there's definitely something about this. So there was absolutely no way. I was gonna go back to this, and 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 strange enough, I did two uh, ninety-four point seven Joburg cycle tours when I was non-plant based, and then when I was plant based, I literally cut my time with more than forty minutes, almost an hour, and I was like, "There's something here," you know. Yeah. And out of a moment of madness last year to promote this lifestyle, and I talk about this in almost all my shows, I ran a double marathon in a day. To prove that, yeah. you know, and 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 usually the coaches would say you need to give yourself more than twenty weeks to train for this. You know, I trained in nine weeks, yeah. literally. So, 
I was either going to die on that day because it was it was the weather was crazy. It was probably 36, 37 degrees. I had I had sunburn, like bad sunburn. You know, my body was aching, but it was to prove the point. But the most important thing was I recovered so quickly. Cause because you're not you're supposed to rest your body after after that, you know, that grueling experience. But I was cycling that weekend. I cycled more than 70k that weekend. So that's that's when I was like, you know what? I'm onto something here. You know. The problem then becomes a lot of people who say, we want to transition. Right? It sounds simplistic if I tell them I did it. I mean, but there was I'm going. I'm pushing for my fourth year now. It's easier if you say it because you are on and in the transition, you know. And I can definitely, definitely, with confidence, say two years from now, you'll you'll still be here, you know. Uh, but but layman, okay, I'm not vegan. Let's say I'm coming to. I'm not vegan. I'm saying, you know what? I see this thing is working for you. I want to try it. You know, help me out. You know, because apparently we're very simplistic. Yeah. So what I always say to my friends is keep the keep one day in a week. Yeah. And challenge yourself to go meat free. Yeah. Don't start with the whole week. Don't start with throwing out all the meat in your fridge. Yep. Choose one day in the week where you're yeah. comfortable saying, Okay, this is what I'm gonna have for breakfast, what I'm gonna have, you know, th these are my meals for the day. Yeah. And just just keep track of how you're feeling on those days and the more consistently you do it, the, the the more you're also going to realize, or the more you're also going to feel that your body like is responding to that one day. Yeah. Because even last year when I, you know, I hadn't gone vegan, and because what I'd do is I'd let my sister cook all of her vegan food, and then I'd get up and just make some meat or order some meat. <laughs> and some meat right? Yeah. But if, even that, I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna feel bad about this because the majority of this. She's, yeah. You know, everything else here is prepared vegan except for the meat that I've added to my plate. Yeah. And that's okay. There's like this other um friend of mine who actually went vegan before me. And then when I transitioned, she was like, oh my God, this thing is so difficult. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. And I'm yeah. just like, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. Um, like don't expect your journey to be like mine because yeah. we also have very different relationships with food. You know? Of course, your oh, yes. So for me, it was like I said, it wasn't as difficult because a lot of these things, I didn't like dairy, you know, I don't eat yeah. consumers, all of those things. So they were easy things for me to give up. Mm -hmm. But if for, start with the things that are easiest for you. Like if you're not so into mayonnaise, yeah. switch to veganaise. If, you know, honey is, you can do without it, you know, switch, make those small changes yeah. and they add up. And then just take a, one day in your week say today these are my plant-based days and see if it doesn't change your life yep just like that just like that yeah. i i wish people could actually understand it's actually not as difficult as we think it is the thing is that when you haven't done it we we have this weird relationship with meat but also a conditioning that yeah meat is your source of protein like oh yes you don't have meat you're getting absolutely no protein, no protein at all yeah and it's a misconception so if what you what I, I what I think people will realize on that meat free day yeah. is how you you don't crave or miss meat as because it's 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 in your mind. Yeah. And you've already told yourself that oh I can I, I'll never have a meal without meat or whatever. Yeah. But the body is such a strange thing that you'll do it and your body will surprise you because you you've gotten all of the necessary nutrients that you needed. Yeah. So that gap or whatever that you think you'll feel, yeah, your mind might still tell you that you'd love some chicken with this meal. Yeah. But what you think your body or the response you're expecting from your body, yeah. you won't get. Yeah. So that's what I always say to people: like, I'm not gonna try and get you to go vegan overnight, but if yeah. you take one day and just like listen to your body on that day and, yeah. and see what the, what it feels like, you will yeah. see that it's really not that difficult. Great stuff, great stuff. And what's a typical day like? What a typical day for you? So a typical day for me, I wake up, I go on Pinterest, look at some 
<laughs> That's where you get all those nice recipes. I see you. Yeah. I see you. Yeah, <laughs> Um, want some nice mushroom on the side, and then she's like, Oh, okay, let me see what I can do. So, make me a scrambled okay, to go make us a scrambled tofu. Um, lovely, I don't know, I love tofu. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm also blessed that I don't have to do my own cooking. So, yeah, oh, okay, I crave things, and, <laughs> and my sister just brings them to life in the kitchen. I think we should have had a double show today. We should have, but you know, I told you we're new parents. Now. Yeah. No, 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 no. I get it. I get it. I get it. And so, so your, I go to your page and I look at other meals. I'm like, yeah, this will do. This will do. This will do. Because I mean, you can only you can only plan these meals so much on your own. Also, I mean, and it and and it, and it actually helps to be a society. You know. Then I then I go and I'm like, hmm. Okay, I like this. I like. You know, and, and and what I like about your page is that people are familiar with what you put there. It's not like people are bringing in some. Fun. I, I I think the one new thing that I came across when I was vegan was tofu. Yes. You know, the rest of it, and tofu actually made me forget about eggs because I make scrambled tofu. You make scrambled tofu in the morning with you know nutritional yeast and baby spinach, and you're good. The one thing I don't like is vegan cheese; it doesn't melt. <laughs> It doesn't melt. <laughs> so Don't just eat any vegan cheese. I'm not going to promote anyone right now. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I'm, I'm getting used to it. Is it? Does it melt? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, not believing in this thing. We don't eat meat, and yeah. now we're, you know, cooking this meat for. Yep. So yeah, but anyway, we, I think we'd be really excited to get into something that can help us continue that or start that up again. Yeah. But in a way that doesn't conflict with with our yeah. you know, our vegan beliefs because. Yeah. Okay, well, you're talking to an Ironman in training who actually needs to eat a lot of vegan food. <laughs> I need to consume about 3,000 calories a day, minimum. Yeah. I'm trying to eat like little things like that a day. Yeah, and, and I think, I think the, one, the one downside about veganism is that you get full quicker. So, so with me is I can go and cycle and burn 2,000 calories, plus the 2,500 I'm supposed to eat besides training. So it means that whatever you burn, you must eat. So it means I must eat 4,500 calories a day. Yeah, yeah. But but the thing with me, the challenge with me is that I would still eat that 2,000 something calories. So because it's it's nutrient dense. It's high in fiber. You, it fills you quicker. It does. Like we even cut our eating to two meals a day. Like and then you're fine. Yeah. We we have breakfast at twelve because first first we're doing it for dietary purposes. But yeah. we realize we don't wake up hungry enough, and we and we you know make this thing like we're not gonna eat if we're not hungry. So we wake up and we really aren't hungry. So yeah. we're like, okay, not we're gonna stick to twelve. We're gonna break yeah. at twelve, and we'll have supper six, seven latest, and. We're full. Yeah. That, we're full. So that's also that's also been my biggest challenge is that I intermittent fasted for more than a year. And so I'm used to not eating before twelve. And now with the intensive training, I need to have breakfast before if I train in the morning. So to avoid the breakfast in the morning, I train much later during the day. Like today I haven't had breakfast yet. Well, I didn't have breakfast. I ate at twelve. Yeah. So, but it means that now before eight, I need to make sure that I go because I'm going cycling. <laughs> I'm going to burn probably a thousand calories again. So that's the downside of veganism. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just before we tap out, uh, any message there for Abanda Bafnukala? Uh, please check out vegan page, vegan manyan, sabu vegan for those who are kind of vegan. Mm -hmm. or wanting to go vegan. Um, also, you know, read, read up about the environment. I know, like, the things that always sound like conspiracy theories, right? Yeah. <laughs> the seeds dying out of whatever fish yeah. has. But you know what? Read. And at the very least, if if that doesn't sway you, do it for you. Like, what's the, what, the worst thing that could happen is that you become healthy. That's the worst thing that could become is that you become healthy, yeah. you become your healthier self. And yeah, I think that's a consequence that anyone would be. Yeah. And you live longer and you might be left alone by other family members. Just try it. Yeah. No, thanks a lot, Sina. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your time. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's really interesting to talk to someone who is in the transition because I've been talking to people who were like 18 years in the journey, 10 years, you know. Now you're talking to someone who's actually transitioning and, and the passion and the drive. And the good thing is that you've put yourself in the accountability mirror because you post these meals. So tomorrow you can't post salmon. <laughs> I put a video from last year and my WhatsApp went crazy. I think I saw that. I'm like, guys, please, this is an old video. Yeah. But I like that. I like that because people are watching and they're interested. Good. Yeah, it means you've, you've actually, I think I should do that. I think I should probably post a picture where I was. Yeah, I was sit, sitting there with... Uh... See, see who's holding your account. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks a lot. Eh? Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Eh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there was... Uh, uh, this plant power with my way to on the transition from an omnivorous to a plant-based diet with Sino Makubela. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, Till next time. Peace and love. Thank you. Only put out what we put in. Plant Power with Mawetu will show you the chemistry of life through food that goes from the ground to the body.